Hello and welcome to me and my golf TV. We're your coaches, Andy and Pierce, and it's time for this week's Impact Show. Pierce, what do the viewers have in store today? Today, Andy, we are talking about the relationship between your club face and your hips. Let's take charge of your game. So thanks for joining us here on the beautiful 18th hole at the Ashbury in Shropshire, England. And we're answering more of your questions. Loads of great ones coming in, so make sure you get involved for next week. What are you struggling with? Post them down below and we'll choose one for next week. Now, we've got a question here from Aki508 saying, I'm quite static with my hip rotation when I strike the golf ball. Will a better hip rotation help me square the club face instead of slicing the shot? Pierce, let's explain what he's talking about there. The relationship basically between his hips and... And the golf Very ball. common question, isn't it? Yeah, people ask this a lot. So what Aki is saying is that uh, when he is striking the golf ball, that his hips are pretty much coming back to the position where they started at the setup, which is pretty much parallel to the target line. He's asking, should I get a little bit more of this in my swing, a little bit more hip rotation in order to help square the club face up? Okay, and again, this is a common one. We see that some of the best players in the world get these hips really clearing out the way. And he's asking if he clears these hips, will it help uh, clear the face? Pierce, a couple of examples. Let's talk about actually how the hips influence the club face because they are a, they've got a very important relationship, haven't they? They have, and it's interesting that you mentioned some of the better players. And it, sometimes it's good to mention the good players to actually get something that you can associate with and you can see. Jim Furyk, straightest hitter on tour pretty much for a number of years. When he strikes the golf ball, he has a massive amount of hip rotation. You know, ridiculous amount of hip rotation, more than I can physically get out. But as he's been tested over the years as well, we found out that Jim has very little forearm rotation through the golf ball. So his forearms are rotating very little, which means the club face is not doing that through the ball. It's rotating very little. So what we're saying in that instance is a lot of hip rotation may actually feel as though the face can't close quick enough for some people. Okay, so the more we rotate the hips on the way through, the less or the slower, should we say, the club face is rotating. This is why he's so straight, because that face is very stable through the shot. We see this with a lot of straight hitters. Somebody who may be not so straight, let's take Phil Mickelson, for example. Our friend Phil Mickelson, who is an amazing player, but he's not the straightest. When he, stri when he swings down, he hasn't got as much hip rotation as others, but then he gets a lot of this, a lot of hand action through the golf ball, and he's not the straightest when he does it. Okay, so we can really see that, I mean, almost answer his question there, really, yeah. if he rotates the hips a lot, okay, it's probably not going to help him square the face. He's probably going to hit more slices. And this is probably, because he's slicing, this is where the relationship is, because he's slicing it, this is why he's probably having to slow down his hips. Yeah. So because the face is struggling to get back to square at impact, he's struggling to actually fire the hips, because if he did, it's going to go even more so, yeah, to, exactly. to the right. This is in a very open position like that there. If I were to use my hips on the way down to fire this club in, you would see that the, hip, the, the club face is probably going to stay open out to the right and it's interesting when you look at some of the better players Dustin Johnson, Zach Johnson, DJ and ZJ as we call them they've actually got a club face which is strong or closed through their goal swing they have to work their hips very hard just as one of the components to actually help square the face up. It's something we say all the time you've got to have a reason to move those legs or remove those hips and if the face is in a stronger position throughout the back and down swing then you've got more chance of actually firing those hips and clearing out the way. So Pierce let's um one thing we know about Aki is that his club face is generally open to the path at impact. We don't know what his backswing looks like, but we, we're going to focus more on if your face is generally coming back open, let's give you a fix to actually get it to the most important part of the swing. That's impact, isn't it? It is. And this drill is going to sound maybe not the most sort of exciting drill in the world, but it's actually probably one of the best drills that we use with our students. If they are slicing the golf ball and they want to work, at just the good methodology of what this club face should be doing through the golf ball. So alignment stick on the ground at about 90 degrees, well at 90 degrees to my target line. Now what we get people to do here is we get them to have a full backswing and then just return the club back down to impact. And we can get the hips working, so let's work the hips, but get the club returned back to impact. And the objective is that you get the leading edge matched up to the alignment stick. Now so many people when they do this for the first time, they come in and the face comes in like this. They get the hips working, but you see the face now is open. So we want you at a minimum to get the club face square to that alignment stick, or why not even work at getting that club face close to that alignment stick. And you can even, if you want to, mix it up by having some hard swings and trying to stop down by impact. 
but getting that face squared up to that alignment stick as a minimum. And do you know what? This looks a really simple drill that Pierce is doing. You're going to have a go at this and you're actually going to find it really hard to stop an impact, yeah. okay? But yeah. this is going to give you some control and awareness of what the face is doing. And as you develop that awareness yeah. and control, you're going to see the ball flight change quite quickly. So a few of those swings, then taking it to the shot, you're going to see some interesting results straight off, aren't you? Definitely, definitely. So if you're slicing the ball or even hooking the ball, you know, you need to understand how to control this. And this drill here, squaring it up, is really going to help you. Take that out of the way. Are you going to make me hit a shot now? Yes, yeah, so no. Pierce doesn't need to do any more of this. He's only making me hit a shot here because he knows it's going to go left because of the work that I've just been doing. I don't need any help in rotating that club face through the ball. I get too much of it. Expect a little All right, draw on this one. a little bit of a draw maybe. Let's see what happens. Needs to work back. It needs to work back a little bit more to that flag. That's a pretty good shot, yeah. Birdie putt. So a really good drill there. Hope that answers your question. You've now got an understanding of how this and the club face sort of work together. But if you have a go at that, you're certainly going to get the ball flight changing. Hopefully, then being able to fire the hips a little bit better through the golf ball as well. Post any questions. Remember for next week, and we'll choose one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. So if you're enjoying what you're seeing here, make sure you hit the like button and hit that subscribe button as well to see more great videos like this every single week. It is for free. Yes, and if you struggle with that slice, make sure you check out our four-part video series, Turn Your Slice Into A Draw. It's definitely going to help you get rid of that slice. Click in the corner right there. I'll take you straight to it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.